The little known fact about quail is that it is a finger food. If you see someone eat quail with a fork and knife, do not trust that person. So today on Kandipa Texan, we are making charred quail with a banana leaf brine and this beautiful, sticky, perfect glaze. Let's taste it. Oh my God. Why do we brine? And what do we brine? You can brine anything you want, but I stand by this. Brine your birds. If you're not brining your birds, you're putting your bird in a marinade. I know some people are saying, oh, it's chicken, oh, it's turkey. No, any kind of bird is going to get dry. And you have to basically think of brine as your insurance. Today, we're basically making a pretty simple brine, but we're just adding a couple different variations just to give something that feels a little bit more depth of flavor. And it always is because of the ingredients we're using. So first things first, before we even start on getting our, our salt water solution, banana leaf. This is just a segment of a banana leaf. Most banana leaves are pretty big, but we just need basically a little rectangular piece for this brine recipe. This is a very hot cast iron. This is a washed banana leaf. We're just gonna basically sear it. The reason why we wanna do that is because banana leaves have so many different flavor properties. But in order to really kind of get them to do what they need to do, a little bit of charring is gonna get that savoriness. In a lot of traditional brown community cooking, you have banana leaves where you'll wrap a piece of meat. This is in South India, this is in Mexico, this is something that two different cultures from two different sides of the world were doing at the same time. You know, great minds, right? But you cook things in banana leaves because you want the flavor from a banana leaf. So that's what we're doing. We're basically simulating something being cooked in a banana leaf, but we're just adding it to our brine. Okay, turn it over. So basically you still have like the sheen. You're just wanting it to sort of get a little bit of sear from your cast iron. So now our banana leaf is ready to be added to our pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and add it to our pot that's on low, turn this off. All right, moving on, let's go to jaggery. So jaggery is our traditional and also one of the, well not one of, it is the oldest form of processed sugar. So we're basically just getting a nice giant block of palm sugar jaggery here, which you find a lot in South India, as opposed to North India. We're trying to get about a cup of it. We've got about, I wanna say a little bit more than half a cup. So we got a little bit more cutting to do. But what's nice with palm sugar jaggery is like, it really can cut through pretty easily. That's how you know. It's something that is easier to work with than you think. So it looks like a lot, but remember we're making a nice amount of this brine. So we're gonna add it to our pot. And for those who don't know where you can find jaggery, we like to call it in my community, you can just find jaggery at the Indian store, which is uh, pretty inaccurate. So what we're talking about are desi stores. The, these are stores that basically cater towards not just Indian people, but also people from Sri Lanka, people from Nepal, people from Pakistan, people from Bangladesh. So that is where you can find places that are not only going to have palm sugar jaggery, but all kinds and different kinds of styles of jaggery. So find it at your neighborhood Indian store. So now that we've got our jaggery in here, we've got our banana leaf working. You can see that it's getting like more charry, more crispy. We're ready to add our salt. So we're gonna do about a cup of salt here. And we're making a gallon of brine. So I know this amount is like, oh my God, what is going on? A gallon is gonna make a lot of birds delicious. So here comes our first quart. And we're gonna add three more. So we've got a gallon of liquid here. We're gonna finish it off with some lime. We're gonna basically let it do its thing. With brine, let's say you don't have 
a gallon's worth of birds that you need to brine. What are you gonna do with the rest of it? You can freeze this. You can actually just put it in your ice tray, many, maybe many ice trays, depending on how many, um, or how much of this brine you're actually gonna use. And you can freeze it, pop it out when you're ready to use. So making a large amount at one time is a great idea. So that way you don't have to keep doing this over and over and over. It's just ready, sitting there, waiting for you in your freezer. Okay, now that all of my ingredients have dissolved, we've brought our liquid to a boil. I'm gonna actually turn this off. We're going to let our liquid cool. I'm gonna add back in my limes because it's just gonna keep adding more flavor. And I'm gonna tidy up and then we're gonna get ready to brine some quail. I don't know if I've said this enough, probably one zillion times, but I am not only South Indian, but I am also Texan. And in Texas, especially in the fall, we have an abundance of quail. So that is what we're going to do today. Plus it's like more exciting than chicken, right? So we've got our quail. This is just raw. It's just chilling, hanging out. As you can see, smaller birds. Um, I love quail. I think it's my favorite bird. Um, they have no couth, essentially. Like these birds just like splay out, especially like you'll see once we start charring it, but we'll get back to that. For four to six quail, we need one quart of brine. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just get myself a quart deli. It's not a full quart yet, but you know, I know that's about two and a fourth cups, so. Add our brine, get a little bit more. And here, you know, because I'm gonna store the rest of this brine by itself, I'm gonna go ahead and fish out our beautiful charred banana leaf and go ahead and transfer it for our quail. Extra flavor, right? Plus, if I'm freezing the rest of this, I'm not gonna have the limes in there. I'm not gonna have all of that. I want this to be easily frozen in some ice trays. So now I'm gonna get my quail, go ahead and submerge all four of these babies in our water. And this is going to be brining for quail. Honestly, you can get this ready in two hours. You can get this ready in four hours. The best time is between six to eight hours. So it doesn't take as long as bigger birds because that makes a lot of sense, but basically two to six hours, two to eight hours, that's your sweet spot for quail. So we're gonna go ahead and put this quail in the fridge. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and make a glaze with the jaggery caramel. First things first, I want to get a cast iron going ready steady because this is all gonna come together pretty quickly. So I want something hot and happening on the side so I can get my ingredients together and I'm not wasting time. So. As you know, probably by now, if this is not your first video, I like things spicy. So we're gonna go ahead and roughly chop, and I mean roughly chop. I've got about three or four Thai chilies. I love using Thai chilies when I'm making a glaze because they have a little bit of sweetness to them. They have a little bit of funk to them. Thai chilies are one of my favorites. So I'm gonna go ahead and add it to this cast iron. And then that's just not enough heat for me and I need a different kind of heat. So chili flakes, just ubiquitous chili flakes. They all come from one kind of chili, but who knows? You just get them at the grocery store and they just say chili flakes. So I'm gonna say that's about a tablespoon or so of chili flakes. I'm gonna let that kind of heat up because when you just add chilies to a dry cast iron, it actually lets it bloom. It's like spices, like literally spices, right? it's going to make sure that we get a little bit more of a floral heat. So letting that go. Here I have some tamarind paste. I wanna use paste whenever I'm making a glaze because I wanna make sure something is sticky. It's going to stick to whatever meat, whatever vegetable I'm trying to glaze. This is a place where I would not use tamarind water. I want tamarind paste. So just go to the store, go to the grocery store, get some tamarind paste. Jaggery caramel, we have a whole recipe in the description for you if you wanna learn how to make it from scratch. Add a cup of this jaggery caramel to our searing cast iron. Our jaggery is kind of getting itself acquainted with our chilies. 
And then we're gonna go ahead and add, I have, I have a cameraman here who is very upset every time I'm left-handed, so I, I need to do things this way in order for me to feel good. But in order for y'all to see it, I need to do it this way. All right, so we have our paste. We have our jaggery caramel. We have our chilies. If you have noticed, I'm making a glaze and I am not adding salt to it. The reason why I'm not adding salt to it is because we have plenty of salt in that brine. And we wanna make sure that we're adding flavor to the quail, but we're not trying to add more salt to it. At that point, we're over salting our very small, uncouth birds. So as that's going, it's coming together pretty quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze a lime directly into my cast iron. Okay, I feel good about the amount of lime. I'm gonna cut it. That literally took about, what, three minutes? Your glaze is done. So I'm gonna wipe my hands, wash it, get this off of heat, and then we're gonna get ready to char some quail. Okay, we have our quail fully brined. It's been about eight hours. Before I took basically all of my setup, I made sure to take the brain, the brain, the quail out of the brine so it needed to just rest outside of the brine. I want to make sure I get a nice sear on it. And if I got straight from quail to brine to cast iron, it would poach instead of sear. So that's why just giving it about 40 minutes to an hour to let it breathe by itself, it's gonna do a world of good before we start searing. So quail is ready. I'm gonna take just a portion of my glaze to basically brush onto the raw quail. That's why we have two different bowls here. So I'm not going to use a lot to brush. So I would just say a fourth of your glaze is perfect with your pastry brush. Just take your time to make sure you get glaze on every little bit of it. It's a small bird, so go a little crazy. Like this is just its main flavoring agent other than the brine. So you wanna make sure that your quail is completely submerged in your gorgeous glaze. Plus you spent like three whole minutes to make the glaze, right? Like get your money's worth. Quail is expensive, so that's why you wanna make sure this is good. Flip it, do it one more time. In, in a way, it's a little bit similar to barbecue because when you go to a barbecue, when you think about a barbecue glaze, you're thinking about smoky flavors. It's the same thing is happening here. I know Bernie is not a word, but I'm using it that way. We want charry, Bernie flavors, okay? Bernie is a city. Bernie is a city in Texas. Yeah, we also want flavors from Bernie, Texas. If you're from Bernie, Texas, comment below. I don't know, you can comment if you want. <laughs> All right, guys, I feel like this is plenty of glaze. I'm gonna go ahead and add about a tablespoon to my giant cast iron. I'm using a very big cast iron, even though it's for small quail, because this needs a little room between each quail to do its thing. All right, first one. And with quail, make sure you put breast side down first. Land them kind of opposite each other. And basically we're just going to let it cook on each side for about three minutes. We're not touching our quail yet, but you can already tell here that the meat is starting to seize up. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for pops. We're looking for the meat to start going up on the leg bone right there. That's what we're looking for. So the reason why we use coconut oil in this particular recipe is because the jaggery caramel has lots of coconut cream in it. You can use any oil you want to sear quail in, right? Like whatever you want but I wanna to continue to have a flavor profile. So if I know that the jaggery caramel has lots of coconut cream in it, I'm gonna go ahead and use coconut oil because I'm trying to make sure the flavors here are pronounced. So there's different ways of building flavor. One of the ways you can do it is if you know something is happening in your glaze, 
and that is a fat you can use to help sear it, that's a match right there. Okay, now we're ready to turn this over. Let's take a look. Oh, come on. That's what we're looking for. That little wing right there. And this is a good way to kind of tell what part of your cast iron is hot, what part of your cast iron needs a little bit of work. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my quail to where I can get another sear on it. So I know it's hot over here, it's hot over here. Let's see where we land here. We're going to go ahead and turn it over here. All right, another way you can see that things are getting cooked closer, your quail is actually going to kind of seize up. It'll actually raise itself because it's getting more air within it and it's cooking. We're not trying to cook this like we would cook a chicken. You'll see what I'm talking about. So it's been about two more minutes. I'm gonna give it one more minute and then I'm gonna hit it again. After that, we're gonna put some more glaze onto it and it's gonna be ready to eat. And that means I need a knife, so I'm gonna go get a knife. All right, I'm gonna turn this one over. We're gonna check and see our most done quail and see where we're at. I'll flip these guys over while we check what this quail is up to. So I like to basically take the middle of my knife and then Hold down here and let your dominant hand just sort of crack it open like that. And we can see our quail is ready, steady to go. So that means I'm gonna go ahead and take the rest of the quail out. And we're going to let it sort of rest for a second. Let's see where we're at. Beautiful, that's what we want. Okay, two for two guys. This is very exciting stuff for me. Woo! <laughs> okay, I'm getting cocky, hold on. Bam! So we're gonna go ahead and take our half quail little bodies, gorgeous ladies. And you can really plate however you want, but I like I like to feel like it's just like a tower, tower of quail. They're so tiny that that's really like, to me, appealing. I'm gonna go ahead and spoon over more of this gorgeous glaze. We're looking for a very acidic and sticky time with quail. Lots of lime right at the end, some herbs. Yes, let's use both, both parts of the line. Let's go crazy here. Fuck wings, eat quail. Here is our charred quail, brined in banana leaf, glazed in jaggery caramel, lots of chilies. It's gonna be delicious. This has been Kandipa Texan. I'm your chef, Deepa Shreeder, and I'll see you in the next video. Like and subscribe for more.